Can I reach over and get a swig of my coffee? Of course, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'll join you, actually. I'll have a bit of water here. Are you like this news guy over here? He says any men that, well, he's, a, he's more of a personality than a newsman. Any men that drink with a straw in a cup or sisters. Hey, I do that all the time, Dick. Don't I worry do. about that. I drink booze that way as well. It gets to you oh, quicker. Really? <laughs> <laughs> a quick shot. Ladies and gentlemen, Darren here, Slaughtered Land Movie Podcast. I couldn't be more happier at the moment. I have legendary stuntman Dick Wallop with me here. Dick, how are you doing, sir? It is okay to call you Dick, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lovely to have you on. How are you doing? It's a nicer name than some people call me. Um, <laughs> I'm Darren, I'm doing pretty good, and thank you for having me on, and I'm sorry it's taken so long to get here. No, 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 that's absolutely fine. Listen, you were an absolute gentleman about this. I reached out to you, and I didn't expect to get any sort of response whatsoever. And within 24 hours, your lovely wife had replied to me and said, yeah, we think we can make this work. When are you available? Well, well she did. She got a long whip out and she said you're gonna do this you're gonna do so i was bleeding about the body and so i said okay i'll go excellent excellent um, she's a sweetheart she's a she's my god gave me a blessing and it was her it was i mean he gives me blessings all the time but that's the big one that's really cool that's really cool i think i saw her because i was at the halloween 45 convention in pasadena last year that's she made with it. Was she was she there with you? Um, yes, I yeah, I I do remember. A little her. short, dark haired gal with short hair. That's right. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. I I've been watching interviews of you online for quite some time now over the years, the various ones that you've done, and my fascination with your career is with the firewalk that you did in Halloween Two. Now. I tried to find as much information as I could on this as possible because I want to do my own little video on it because I think it is one of the coolest and most amazing looking stunts that's ever come out of Hollywood in terms of the ferociousness and the intensity of that burn that you go through. And I just want to hear more about it. Um, because, but every interview that I see that you do where you mention it, you kind of, kind of nonchalantly just sort of brush it aside as if it was nothing whereas to me it's like the coolest fire stunt i've ever seen i mean i remember as a kid my parents showing me the towering inferno in the in the in the 70s now i don't know if you had anything to do with that movie at all but you know those fire stunts were kind of really cool but then eight or nine years later when they do halloween 2 you do this firework whereas you are absolutely engulfed to the point that you can barely be seen and i just want to know more about it so i wonder if you could talk me through the process of the planning of the stunt was it originally scripted that way did you help out with the coordination of it all you know how did it all start well it it, it was in the film i mean it was in the script that that was to happen uh we did do it indoors which made it more difficult because they even had a roof a ceiling on that set and what you see down that set i mean that's a, con a confined space for doing a fire burn and and at at that point in time it people rated it the biggest and baddest burn done at that point i think when i did fire starter that was that was awesome too you know Hindenburg was pretty bad, but it was over quick, just right out of the yeah. nose cone. But, but yeah, and um, uh, so I've drawn you a sketch of the set. I'm, oh, wow. I'm not a, well, I'm not a real, uh, you know, artist, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the, the director and, and I and the effects people got together and worked out how it was going to happen and the, the effects guys I already had it built and I'll show you this and I hope you can see it I think it shows up better there let's see I back okay. it up a, a little bit uh this is the walls you know this one and, and this one over here are the walls and I tried to give some depth to it so uh, here we're, we're overlooking the corridor in the hospital right 
Uh, yeah, that's looking at the place I came out. I came out, let's see, right right out of here. Yeah. This this orange and red represents the fire. Okay. Uh, on the other side of the walls, where, that, where we were back here, there was propane tanks. Right? You got yep, the propane yep. tanks, and then you got a fan up here that's sticking through the wall that's, I don't know. About this big, thing mm -hmm. shaped, and about that thick, and the the propane was was forced out of those, and up and and they that filled the uh, that filled the doorway. Now the preparation was, I had a suit that was about, I'm going to say between a a quarter and a half uh, inches thick, and it was. Uh, uh, Velcro, not Velcro, but uh, oh shoot, I can't remember the in the name of the stuff. But it was early stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and I didn't realize it at the time. I had rented it from another stunt guy that it had zippers. I mean, I didn't even pay attention. I zipped it up and you know had the the thermal underwear, the Nomex underwear underneath it. And now they just do thermal and put put the gel on, and <laughs> they, uh, it's amazing what they do. But I had the gloves, and and I didn't even look at, I never saw the mask, you know, the thing that I put on over my head. Uh, I never saw that before or after. I didn't see it until it burned in the movie, you know, the, 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 the music. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I prepared by wetting the underwear, uh, and, and which may have been a bad, bad deal, but I, I got in the suit, got all ready, I had my son, Billy, who was in the movie as one of the kids outside the Myers house. He said, have you seen our friend Bennett Tramer? You know. Uh, oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so were two of your sons in the film then? Yeah. The boombox. The boombox kid as well. Yeah. And Bill, yeah. Billy was picked first. Uh, I talked to casting and to John and, and I mean, not John, but uh, Rick. Uh, Rick. And, and he said, yeah, that, that, that's cool. I'd, and then Deborah said the same thing, so that's how that's how they got in. But he, I had him as a safety guy, and I had the guy there, Ricky Caruso, who is deceased now. God rest his soul. He's the guy I rented the suit from. Mm -hmm. So I had I had three guys on each side with extinguishers, and uh, some couple of effects guys were with them too. And so I was prepared that way. They were at the the opening in the back where I came in. And and they were along the doorways, and then they were out by the camera, all three stationed like that. So so the initial blast, I guess, was one take, and then it was rigged up for the propane tanks for you to do the actual walk on fire. Maybe they did. Yeah, they did do the blast because she ran down the hall. That's right. And yeah. Got, yeah, and she said that got a little warm on my backside. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that they did. It's it's not it's not as good as it used to be at all. I mean, it's it's going downhill. I'll be eighty five in February, and I, I guess it just comes with old age. <laughs> well, you're amazing for eighty five. Wow, well, uh, I saw you at the convention there. You've still got plenty of life in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to manage to get out in the yard and shovel and you know cut trees and do stuff, but. Anyway, uh, did that explain the blast? Yeah. So, 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 so you're you're there. You're lit up. How many times did you actually do that that walk? I you mean, once. Once. I keep it thinking it. I think keep thinking it was twice. We walked through it. Uh, yeah. And and my son Billy, he said, "Dad, you only did it once." <laughs> yeah, I did. And that's when I got the burn on my arms. So were you burnt badly? No, 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 no. It just we're right the line where the zipper went up. It just got real hot. Yeah. And if you watch the, the burn closely, uh, I came and I went uh -uh, and I did a jerk and then I jerked again, and that was because it was it was getting hot and it was starting to burn me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I got a oh. picture. I was going to get these pictures up, but I forgot. Oh, that's I got a okay. Of me sitting in a chair. With the doc putting the grease on my arm, and a couple of the stunt guys were were hanging around watching. 
so back then i mean because now when the, the, the thing that i like about it is that nowadays when you see a fire stunt you don't really see the front of people on fire because they're so gelled up so you can see it's an actual actor or stuntman facially whereas with this you're on fire front back top sides everywhere how does that feel inside i mean do you do you, don't, put, you, don't, you don't feel a thing no no you don't and, and and presumably you can't see either when you're walking yeah oh you can yeah yeah there, there's uh pyrex uh glass uh, eyes uh, and you know that you can see out of well they're not eyes but they're you know yeah like sunglasses but oh, pyrex I'll... yeah and and do you gel would you gel your body up underneath the suit or because i didn't have gel back then they so there wasn't such a thing no do you know how it was invented invented i think it was in australia oh wow. a big a big warehouse fire and uh, i don't know whether they manufactured this stuff or not but when they went in to investigate the fire were these 55 gallon <laughs> drums of this liquid that had fallen over and it was spilled out and that was the only thing that didn't burn oh wow and and it's, one of the stunt guys got a hold of some of this at one point and did use it on his hands and it it didn't didn't get hot and didn't burn so they they brought it to america and and started using it and tony caesar was a big one i used tony in, a, in the movie called uh, the thing yeah, yeah where i blasted him with the uh flamethrower and he walked around right through the wall and into the snow and did that burn yeah 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 uh i don't remember I don't remember ever using gel. I I may have used it on the fire uh, fire starter. Yeah, yeah. That was that was uh, Nick, uh, not it, not Nick Adams, but uh, Phil Adams and I were the two guys that ran away and got burned up there and the most. In, yeah, in the movie, yeah, you know. Yeah, but it's it's a great burn, but it's st I still don't think it it's uh, as 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 impressive as the as the halloween 2 one um i i, I j just back to halloween 2 as well so so you're burning you're relying on your own son there to to uh, to to put the flames out yeah is he was he, at the middle door okay on my, on, on my right is yeah. is he kind of um covered in fireproof gear as well or is it just sort of no I, i'm guessing i'm guessing these days they would insist on it probably but but back then from yeah yeah because there was they, they they immediately when i hit the floor and they hollered cut they shut the fire off so there was no more fire except what was on me and they stood at a distance and, and shot me with the the extinguishers and yeah that, it worked out well I was going to say that. What, what was the? What was? I mean, so you 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 sit down, you cool off. Do you then automatically go over and and check it out on the on the screen, uh, on the monitor to see how it looks? No, and, he didn't use monitors. Oh, really? Okay. Rick, so the, no, he didn't use monitors. So so what was the? What was it like when you saw it for the first time? Um, was everybody pleased with the result? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. I I I was too. You know, I mean, it, it was a big burn. Yeah, and I was I was proud of it. Mm. Oh no, I still it, am. You know, I still am. But it's impressive. I mean, you. I don't know if you know this, but you even made a T-shirt. I'll be darned. I've mean, never seen that one. Yeah, <laughs> they, they did make the T-shirt. Uh, Which I love. I love that T-shirt just because it has that firewalk on there. Um, a, bu a buddy of mine a couple of years ago, he he's also a fan of the stunt as well. He has a YouTube channel, a guy called Dave McRae. And he spotted, and this is obviously with the advent of high-definition DVD and Blu-ray and things like that, but he spotted that you're still holding the scalpel while you're doing yeah. the firewalk. Yeah. Now... How does that come about? Did they say, right, before we light you up, Dick, you need to be holding this? Do they do they glue it into your hand? Do they because no, presumably no, I, that's gonna get hot as well? I asked for it. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to go as close to, you know, as I could the the way I was when that happened. That was so cool. So whatever. I hated and, that scene. And it, it's almost like for years it was missed because it's so slight in, in the image. You yeah. can barely see it. But like I say, with the advent of high-definition uh, Blu-ray, 
you can you can read if you pause on a few frames you can see that you're holding that is little it in scalpel the picture on the, is it get in the picture on the t-shirt on the t-shirt let me have a look it doesn't look like it is your hand looks open uh where <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> they missed the finer details they missed the yeah, finer they details <laughs> there was one thing that came to mind just before i was um i was about to, to 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 come online with you and it's it's to do with the scene where you're in the uh the, the hospital uh, uh operating theater at the end where jamie yeah. lee shoots you yeah. there's a, there's always a lot of conversation online about where exactly michael is shot in the face is he shot just in the forehead or does she take his eyes out well there's there is controversy on the set and then, and then afterwards about that but uh yeah you can see my eyes are still open mm. but it was it was supposed to be shot in the eyes it was, that was the reason they, that was the reason for the leak yeah yeah you know you know how they did that leak was was it i guess the, the mask was rigged up inside or yeah yeah two copper tubes and and one that in the back it, it formed two and one and i had a a bulb that was actually a, a, a nose cleaner for babies all right a rubber bulb that came in and i had a, a tube that was hooked ran down to my hand and uh, on cue i squeezed it and it, it bled out yeah so, so I guess it was always scripted that she shot him in the eyes because of the, because of the way that he's going around holding his. Yeah, yeah, and I thought that was so stupid. I wanted to take my hand down more often than, mm. and kind of, you know, give it that and put it back, but I didn't. I think I think the the, the question marks have always come up because in subsequent sequels, i.e., Halloween Four, uh, Michael can see again. Uh, and a lot of fans claim that, well, no, it, it's because he wasn't shot in the eyes. He was shot in the head. Well, <laughs> well that would have really blew me away, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they have a theatrical license, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, that, of course. Oh, God. Who, it's, who's going to know? As a friend always says to me, it's a movie thing. That's it. Yeah. It's just a movie thing. Um, <laughs> so, so how would you rank the firewalk in terms of the which of the stunts that you've done has been the toughest? I don't mean just in 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 Halloween too. I I get the impression that 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 the firewalk was kind of a day at the office for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, people ask me, "Weren't you scared? Weren't you?" I, uh, you always you're always concerned, even if it's just falling over a table and hitting the floor. You know, I, I've got to do this so I protect my head and so on and so forth. I've had enough head injuries. I was knocked out on rollerball for three days. Oh wow. Yeah, over in Germany when we did the original rollerball. Were, were you actually skating? Yeah, I was skating around the track yeah. at lunchtime. Back Excellent. Just fooling around. And, and and this one of the other stunt guys was laying on the track, and I was skating backwards. I can't do that, skating. And he raised his arm and caught me because I was going to jump him. And he, he caught me, and I went down and slammed my head on the track. And that track was solid. And uh, I, I, and I went down into center and laid on a gurney that was down there, and I uh, fell asleep. And that was at noon. And I woke up Wednesday evening in the hospital, German hospital. I've been out the whole time. Just that's just one. I did Joe Flynn in a movie, a Disney movie, where he puts a hat on and he's looking in a mirror. And he, this the top half is invisible, and you see the hat up there, and his bottom his pants is. And he falls over backwards and i fell straight over backwards and my feet came up and my head hit the floor oh wow what i mean i've had several things like and even at home i bat my head i've got a high back on my bed on my bed the bedroom and i get in bed bonk oh man <laughs> yeah he said you did it again didn't you so 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 what would you say i mean you've had a huge career what would you say has been your toughest stunt in terms of coordination and execution ah uh, god i don't know i mean it, it, that was a good one i think that was i'm real proud of that one yeah uh, all the burns are are good do you i mean you can get hurt doing a doing a fire burn mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of things you can get hurt at uh i remember one stunt guy that used to double 
Well, the guy that used a TV show in each year, I'm t he'd always turn back to the guy and say, one more time, uh, uh, whatever his name was anyway, all he had to do was come off a balcony on a tree limb and swing down about, and have about a three-foot drop. Broke his leg. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, you never know. Yeah, yeah. Another example was I did a thing at Disney Cats from Outer Space. Where I remember. A, a, the airplane is flying around upside down and around the helicopter and stuff. Yeah, yeah. One, one time we came down and the girl was with me at that point coming down and we got real close to that propeller. And, and I mean real close, within inches. And, and Frank Tomlin saw that. He was piloting the airplane and he just dropped away. And, and then I found out after a week at, at three to 4,000 feet up every day for a week, six months later, he flew into a mountain and died oh, this in a ground wow. crash, the pilot. And, and to back up just a hair, he asked me before we ever took off, he said, Dick, are you going to wear a parachute? I said, with this outfit? I got no place <laughs> to hide it. And I think... That was before they came out with the thinner ones that I could have hi hidden. But I, at that point, they didn't. And he said, well, if you're not going to, I'm not either. Wow. And to have him pass away, I mean, that could have happened that day. But there are yeah, yeah. things that you just have to deal with. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, th I, think, um, I think, you know, with, with fans of the Halloween franchise, you know, a lot of them gravitate towards you as one of the most popular Michael Myers in the franchise. And... For some strange reason, Halloween fans, you know, uh, and it's obviously the John Carpenter collection as well, are huge fans of Kurt Russell. And you was his double for a, a, quite some time, right? You, you you doubled Kurt Russell on a, on a number of movies. And one of the pictures that I love is the picture of the two of you on the set of Escape from New York. It's incredible how similar the two of you look in that shot. If you look at it close, it's not. I don't. We don't. We don't look anything alike. <laughs> it's a great shot. It's the hair that does it, isn't it? Yeah, the hair, the the whiskers. You know, it, 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 that's put the clothes on. They can put the clothes on anybody as long as they're close, and you don't. As long as you stay moving, you keep moving, and I look like anybody. You know, I could look like you. I could double you if I'm just moving all the time. But that's the trick to it. Just don't stop. Yeah, yeah. In one, in one Disney movie, uh, Herbie goes to Monte Carlo. There's a shot. I'm, I'm driving for Dean Jones, and and uh, uh, Don Knotts, is, he gets up out of the car, and he's hanging out the top doing something like this, and I'm driving straight into camera car, right? And you can tell, I mean, <laughs> my wife said, that's you, it? <laughs> uh, it was so obvious. Well, you can, I mean, like, you, you know, there's because the, you have two, a couple of roles in Halloween too, don't you? You're the patrolman who gets out of the, you're, you're the guy driving the car, right? Into the ambulance. Yeah, the police car, yeah. And uh, can, can you tell us anything about that stunt? Because I gather that was, in some respects, more difficult to um, to set up than the firewalk, right? Yes, yes, yeah. We just had to figure it out. It didn't take long for Jack and I. Jack for Boyce was the guy that was played Bennett Tramer. Hmm. And we got together, and I said I suggested that we get a, a platform about eight inches uh, hooked onto the front of the car, and, and about that far off the ground, so it didn't scrape. So that when he walked, we'll do it a, a, a count, and we rehearsed it, and we do it a count when he reaches a certain point, one, two, three, and he's turned. He puts his foot on the front end and leans over. And if you remember the lights, they were not normal. They were. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. Yeah. That's because they undercranked the, the, the camera and sped it up. Ah, oh, okay. Because I'm not going to come in there hot at 30 miles an hour and hit Jack, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. I must have hit him about 12 or 14, something like that, which wasn't too bad. Yeah. And then, then he got off and they put a trailer dumber on the front end, a, dum a dummy, and I slammed into the van. Yeah, that, that was that was pretty pretty that was pretty good, but it wasn't hard to to rig. Mm -hmm. Hard the hardest part was for Jack to remember. I'm I'm seeing this this dot this thing in the in the street. Now I know to turn and you know count and turn. 
Yeah, I mean, it's still it's another that one makes, of those. That makes sense to you. Yeah, you know, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's one of those um, huge shock moments in the franchise, and you know, one of the uh, there's certainly one of the money shots from Halloween Two as well. Can I can I just ask you a personal question here? You hear a lot of stuntmen saying, and I uh, my wife yeah. had the pleasure of meeting um, Jackie Chan once. Yeah, uh, oh, and you know some of the crazy that. stuff that he does. Yeah. He said that he hurts all the time now. I, I do too. You do too. Yeah, it, it's it's just a thing that you have just from throwing yourself around for for forty five, well, fifty years. When I started in the business, uh, it was doing live shows, and I didn't. It was a place called Corrigenville. It was a western town, and you you they they'd rope it off on three sides, and two to three thousand people would be there on Saturday and Sunday to watch us do the Billy the Kid Breaks Jail or the Gun Flat at the OK Corral. We never wore pads or anything, at least I didn't. And those kinds of things add up. And so is this like falling backwards. And now my right hip is is bothering me for the last year and a half or so. So I may have someday if have to have that replaced. I've had my knees replaced already. This is needed. Uh -huh. it, it needed... Uh, I heard it on Rollerball, and then I heard it again on, on uh, Relic. I have seen Relic. The big monster chasing people down the corridors, yeah. Yeah. Well, when the, the helicopters come in over the, the uh, museum, you remember that scene? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was the first one that jumped off, and then I was the, my, my head is so obvious with the hair on the right side of the helicopter that's going in. Uh but I was the first one to rappel down into the building, and the thing comes from this side. I'm here, and it come, got me like that and took me off about 30, 35 feet into a table. But you don't see it. it just, I just disappear out of frame, and then I crash into the table, and it, <clears throat> it chops my head off. And Stan Winston did a beautiful head copy of me. That was you? Would, wow, I remember that. That was yeah that was me <laughs> and so he did he mold did he do a cast of your head yeah yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> you know like that it's uh it's great look dick this has been fantastic meeting you uh i want to say thank you not just on behalf of of, of myself but also my co-host frank who's not with us at the moment also all the <laughs> a shout out to Frank. Um, also, uh, Frank has met you as well, actually, before um, I got a chance to go to Halloween 45 last year. He actually went and met you and um, and, but, and bought me an autograph, a signed autograph uh, um, from you a couple of years ago. So I have that proudly sitting on my wall over I there. Saw you. I'm trying to remember if I saw you there. You, yeah, I remember seeing you. Um, do you remember the day before the con? There was the coach trip, yeah. and we went to the locations around um, around Pasadena. Now we weren't part of that group, but we turned up there at the same time, and we said hello to you outside uh, one of the stores. You were just catching five minutes by yourself, and we just walked past and said hello. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't say that I remember that explicitly, but I didn't have much time by myself. But I yeah. Uh, yeah right right around the corner where the sign of the hub. that's right that's right exactly where you did that walk you were taking five minutes at that exact point yeah um, but no it, it was it was great to meet you then and it's great to meet you now and on behalf of all our members and subscribers of tsl movie podcast you know so many people are huge fans of yourself and what you've done for the franchise um it is a, like it is everybody's favorite sequel and I'd like to thank you for that. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Darren, thank you. Uh, I, I, it's a pleasure, my pleasure to be here and, and be able to do this for the fans because the fans are what make us. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you or be at the conventions, be at 45 or 50, if it wasn't for the fans. And I love each and every one of them from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sincere about that. Well, it's, uh, it, you know, it shows. Every time I've been to a convention that you're at, the queue is for miles. It is. It, people queue all day to see you, Dick, and that's testament I've to what you've done. Yeah, I've, you absolutely I've, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. This has been great. You're welcome. Cheers. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>